Sure. I didn't know if there would be different readings or not. Good morning. My dear friends in Christ, I would just like to bring your attention that we do have the music for today's Mass in our worship aid slash bulletin. If you don't have one, could you kindly go in back in the rear of the church, the narthex, and grab a bulletin and you'll find the music begins on page 10. Thank you so very much.
Please join me in singing our prelude, America the Beautiful, found on page 10 of the bulletin. For spacious skies, for amber waves of gray, for purple mountain majesties above the fruited plain, America, America, God shed His grace. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of my brother Knights, we thank our pastor, Father Tom, for honoring and remembering our veterans today. On this day, we remember all those who served our country in uniform. There was another very important day yesterday, November the 10th, when the United States Marine Corps celebrated their 250, 45th anniversary birthday. Congratulations, Marines. Semper Fi. Our beloved military has taken up the banner and fought for freedom from its inception since our forefathers declared independence from Great Britain in 1776. Since that day, almost three million Americans have given their lives fighting for the freedom of our country and the flag that it represents, which we see you before you today. All glory has been losing respect in many quarters today, but not here at St. John. All our wonderful veterans and those who serve an active duty in all corners of the world. And I say to those who protest our flag and national anthem, you could never stand in the shadow of those men and women who don the uniform, raise their right arm, taking the following oath, which reads in part, to support and defend the Constitution of the United States against all enemies, foreign and domestic. From Bunker Hill to Antietam, 
and Gettysburg names that sear into our souls so our country would not falter. We went on places whose names we can't pronounce. Somme, Verdun, Chateau Thierry in France during World War I. Following that conflict, we ended World War II with the sneak attack by the Japanese on Pearl Harbor on December 7, 1941. Now we fought a war on two fronts, Japan in the Pacific, <clears throat> oh my God, and Germany in Europe. Those of us who are old enough, and I'm sure there are many are here today, remember the names Tarawa, Guam, Iwo Jima, Okinawa, Normandy, Midway, and the Battle of the Bulge in Bastogne. The greatest generation, as the men were called, who fought in World War II, not only saved the world, they ended the Holocaust, which took the lives of some seven million Jews, Catholics, and people whom the Nazi regime deemed unworthy. In Korea, with the Chosun Reservoir, Incheon, and Heartbreak Ridge, then on to the rice paddies of Vietnam, then Iraq and Afghanistan, where the enemy does not wear a uniform. <clears throat> Let us never forget the sacrifices that our men and women have given for the service of their country. They are heroes, and we love them with all our hearts. They, along with our police officers, firefighters, and first responders, are our last line of defense, the final protective line against the tyranny that surrounds us today. If you see a veteran, police officer, or firefighter, first responder, thank them for their service. It will bring a smile to their face. And in conclusion, I'd like to read a couple of paragraphs from a World War II veteran. I guess in one sense, we can say that we are an endangered species, but unlike the spotted owl or the whooping crane, there is no legislation that can be enacted to save us. We are rapidly disappearing off the radar screen, and soon all that will be left is what we have written, what we have recorded, and some old fading phonographs. Our voices will be forever silent, and the untold first-hand accounts of all our experiences will remain untold. We are the boys of World War II. We are dying off at the rate of 1,500 a day. That's 45,000 a month. That number will steadily increase until the unyielding laws of mathematics will give us an increasing rate of deaths, but the decreasing number of deaths. The remaining pool will have become too small. Taps is just one sunset away. But in our lifetimes, we made a difference. We had the good fortune to live during a time when honor, patriotism, and character were important. We stepped up to the plate to defend freedom and put our lives on the line for the cause. It was a moment in history that may never be seen again. And that was written by Captain Quinton Anderson, World War II P-47 Thunderbolt fighter pilot, United States Army Air Corps. <clears throat> and what I would lastly say, before you put your head on the pillow tonight, say a prayer for our beloved country. Duty, honor, and country. God bless all here, and may God bless the United States of America. Thank you.
so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming and the rocket's red glare the bombs bursting in air gave proof through the night that our flag was still there oh say does that star spangled banner yet wave o'er the Please remain standing for our opening hymn, Faith of Our Fathers, found on page 10 of the bulletin. Good morning. My friends, let us begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Welcome on this Veterans Day as we come together as people of faith, people of uh, faith in our loving God, but also people of faith in our country. We come here in thanksgiving for the many men and women who have dedicated 
themselves uh, to fight for the freedom of our country, for our freedoms that we today enjoy. And so, as we come in with this spirit of thanksgiving, we also first turn to the mercy of God and we ask Him to forgive us for all of our failures. You came to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. <clears throat> Lord, have mercy. You came to call us sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You sit at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who arrange all things according to a wonderful design, graciously receive the prayers we pour out to you for our country, that through the wisdom of its leaders and the integrity of its citizens, harmony and justice may be assured and lasting prosperity come with peace. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to Titus. Beloved, Remind them to be under the control of magistrates and authorities, to be obedient, to be open to every good enterprise. They are to slander no one, to be peaceable, considerate, exercising all graciousness towards everyone. For we ourselves were once foolish, disobedient, deluded, slaves to various desires and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful ourselves and hating one another. But when the kindness and generous love of God our Savior appeared, not because of any righteous deeds we had done, but because of his mercy, he saved us through the bath of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit whom he richly poured out on us through Jesus Christ, our Savior, so that we might be justified by his grace and become heirs in hope of eternal life. The word of the Lord. The Lord is my shepherd. There is nothing I shall want. Oops, sorry. Shepherd me, oh God, beyond time. 
be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. As Jesus continued his journey to Jerusalem, he traveled through Samaria and Galilee. As he was entering a village, ten lepers met him. They stood at a distance from him and raised their voice saying, Jesus, Master, have pity on us. And when he saw them, he said, Go, show yourselves to the priests. As they were going, they were cleansed. And one of them, realizing he had been healed, returned, glorifying God in a loud voice. And he fell at the feet of Jesus and thanked him. He was a Samaritan. Jesus said in reply, Ten were cleansed, were they not? Where are the other nine? Has none but this foreigner returned to give thanks to God? Then he said to him, Stand up and go. Your faith has saved you. The Gospel of the Lord. Good morning. We give special recognition to the military on two occasions every year. Veterans Day and Memorial Day. Memorial Day is the more solemn of the events because we honor those who gave the ultimate sacrifice of themselves, their lives, to our country. On Veterans Day, we celebrate everyone who served in the military. As an aside, today the church celebrates St. Martin of Tours, he served in the military. Then he spent the rest of his life in service to the poor, first as a monk and then as a bishop, the Bishop of Tours in France. And in fact, he is the patron saint of France. I served in the military during the Vietnam War. But I have to tell you something. Uh, I did, really did not consider myself especially patriotic when I signed up for ROTC as a freshman in college. In those days, 
signing up via the selective service was compulsory. So I just figured, well, I'm going to be better off as an officer than an enlisted man. So I volunteered and joined ROTC. It was not until I spent time in a number of Soviet Union controlled countries during my service that I realized how much I appreciated my country. In particular, I remember being in East Berlin in the old days, seeing the Berlin Wall, the oppression that existed on their side of the wall, and true freedom on our side. That's when my affection for my country really grew. Years later, when we visited the Vietnam Memorial in Washington, I was very moved by the 58,000 names of soldiers who had given their lives, especially ones that I recognized. As I grow older, I have become more patriotic. I love our country, especially the principles espoused by the Declaration of Independence, life, liberty, the pursuit of happiness. My priorities in life are God, family, country. God, family, country. It really saddens me to see the polarization of politics in our country, especially this year. I long for my fellow citizens to reject the views of the far left and of the far right. I long for a return to civility in political discourse. I may disagree with what you say, but I respect your right to be heard, and I do not hate you for the views that you have. Let the love we share for our country convince us to, to get, elect those legislators that will enact laws that respect our freedoms and our belief in the sanctity of life. Sanctity of life, to me, includes opposition to abortion and euthanasia and the death penalty. But also, it includes love for our fellow human beings especially the poor and the vulnerable, as was the mission in life of St. Martin of Tours. We should never forget our Lord's commandment that he gave to his disciples and us at the Last Supper. Love one another as I have loved you. We all need to act like we really believe what we say we believe when we read Jesus' words, that they are true and they are binding. Father Tom, Father Arun Paul, and Father, uh, uh, Father Paul and our staff here at St. John's are very pleased to honor our veterans today. Thank you for being here. Thank you for your service. I especially ask you, though, to support and pray for our many veterans who are afflicted, some deeply, with physical, mental, or spiritual ills. May they have comfort and support from people like us. You know, at the beginning of the service, we recited the Pledge of Allegiance, right? Now, I don't know, are, are kids required to say this today in school? Do anybody know? Pardon me? Yes, good. Well, I have to tell you, though, when I was a kid, um, we, said a, we had a prayer at the beginning of every school day and the Pledge of Allegiance, but it was sort of like rote, you know? I Pledge of Allegiance, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> uh, it's only when I grew older and look back with the passage of time that I realized how really beautiful, almost a prayer, that the Pledge of Allegiance is. When we say we pledge allegiance to the flag and the United States of America, 
to the republic for which it stands. One nation, one nation, under God. You know, there's a move afoot to remove that phrase from the Pledge of Allegiance. Shameful. Indivisible. Can't be, can't be diminished. With liberty and justice for all. I hope and I pray that the words of the Pledge of Allegiance will reverberate and grow in all of us and all of our fellow citizens. May God bless you. The saints sought to serve Christ in their neighbor's needs. Let us ask God for help to, fo to follow in their footsteps. Thank you. For the church, that the Holy Spirit might inspire the faithful to give of themselves in love to people on the margins of society, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our country, especially during this Veterans Day, that we continue to honor and serve those who dedicated their lives for our freedoms. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the unborn, that society will be moved by the grace of God to protect those vulnerable lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our parish, that our Heavenly Father might make us a beacon of his love for all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That those who have died, especially all the names written in our Book of Remembrance, may share in the glory of eternal life with all the angels and saints. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For peace in the world, for the unemployed and underemployed, for our troops, for an end to abortion and euthanasia, and for the ill of our parish, especially those on our prayer list. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those intentions which are most dear to us, which, you, which we lift up at this time in silence. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in a special way for Paul R. Marsh, for whom this Mass is being offered. We pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, we pray that you grant what we ask you according to your perfect will. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The offertory hymn is How Great Thou Art, found on page 11 of the bulletin. Then 
lofty mountain grandeur and hear the brook and feel the gentle breeze then sings my soul my savior god to great thou art then sings my soul my savior god to thee how great thou art how great thou art pray brothers and sisters of my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father may the saving sacrifice of your son the King of Peace offered under sacramental signs that signify peace and unity strengthen we pray O Lord conquered among all your children through Christ our Lord Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right to give you thanks, truly just to give you glory, Father most holy, for you are the one God living and true, existing before all ages and abiding for all eternity dwelling in an approachable light. Yet you, who alone are good, the source of life, have made all that is, so that you might fill your creatures with blessings and bring joy to many of them by the glory of your light. And so in your presence are countless hosts of angels who serve you day and night, and gazing upon the glory of your face glorify you without ceasing. With them we too. Confess your name in exaltation, giving voice to every creature under heaven as we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, have in and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. We give you praise, Father most holy, for you are great and you have fashioned all your works in wisdom and in love. You formed man in your own image and entrusted the whole world to his care so that in serving you alone, the Creator, he might have dominion over all creatures. And when through disobedience he had lost your friendship, you did not abandon him to the domain of death, for you came in mercy to the aid of all, so that those who seek might find you. Time and again you offered them covenants and through the prophets taught them to look forward to salvation. And you so loved the world, Father most holy, that in the fullness of time you sent your only begotten Son to be our Savior. Made incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary, he shared our human nature in all things but sin. To the poor he proclaimed the good news of salvation to prisoners freedom and to the sorrowful of hard joy. To accomplish your plan, he gave himself up to death and rising from the dead, he destroyed death and restored life. And that we might live no longer for ourselves but for him who died and rose again for us, he sent the Holy Spirit from you, Father, as the first fruits for those who believe, so that bringing to perfection his work in the world, he might sanctify creation to the full. Therefore, O Lord, we pray, may this same Holy Spirit graciously sanctify these offerings, that they may become the body and blood 
of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the celebration of his great mystery, which he himself left us as an eternal covenant. For when the hour had come for him to be glorified by you, Father most holy, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And while they were at supper, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, taking the chalice filled with the fruit of the vine, he gave thanks and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come Therefore, O Lord, as we now celebrate the memorial of our redemption, we remember Christ's death and his descent to the realm of the dead. We proclaim his resurrection and his ascension to your right hand. And as we await his coming in glory, we offer you his body and blood, the sacrifice acceptable to you, which brings salvation to the whole world. Look, O Lord, upon the sacrifice which you yourself have provided for your church and grant in your loving kindness to all who partake of this one bread and one chalice, that gathered into one body by the Holy Spirit, they may truly become a living sacrifice in Christ to the praise of your glory. Therefore, Lord, remember now all for whom we offer this sacrifice, especially your servant, Pope Francis, Frank, our bishop, and the whole order of bishops and the clergy. Those who partake in these offerings, those gathered here before you, your entire people, and all who seek you with a sincere heart. Remember also those who have died in the peace of your Christ and all the dead, whose faith you alone have known. To all of us, your children, grant a merciful Father that we may enter into a heavenly inheritance with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Saint Joseph, her spouse, and with your apostles and saints in your kingdom, there with the whole of creation, freed from the corruption of sin and death. May we glorify you through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. pray together in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us now offer one another a sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I'm not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. pray the act of spiritual communion with those who have joined us for this Mass from home. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen.
The communion hymn is Pani Sangelicus, found in the bulletin on page 11 and 12. Where true joy 
Let us pray. Bestow on us, we pray, O Lord, the spirit of charity, so that sustained by the body and blood of your only begotten Son, we may be effective in nurturing among all the peace that he has left us, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Can you please be seated for a moment? In today's gospel, one leper returns to give thanks to the Lord for what he has done for him. And the Lord says, has only this one foreigner come to give thanks? My friends, we, we need to be people of thanksgiving. We need to be grateful people for the many gifts that we have. And today, we're especially grateful for all the veterans. Those of you who are veterans, please stand. We thank you today, and not just today, every day, for what you have done. In a special way, I wanted to thank Deacon John Sebastian for uh, his uh, beautiful words of faith and wisdom. Thank you, Deacon. And of course, I wanted to thank the Knights of Columbus, who have always, uh, who always remind us uh, of patriotism and faith. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Knights. And now we can stand again. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace now, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Our closing hymn is Mine Eyes Have Seen the Glory, found on page 12 of the bulletin, verses 1 and 4. Thank you. Christ was born across the sea. 